I want somebody who's excited about their home, who's conversational. I want to feel like I'm working with my cousin John. Like we have a conversational relationship. We've been friends forever. You know, there's no reason that people can't be nice and be good at what they do and get things done when they say. Um, so my general rule of, of thumb is don't work with assholes. With the cousins. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Home with the Cousins. We are running back through the project planning series. If you've listened to this before, it is definitely worth another listen. There is an absolute ton of information in these seven episodes. I would also encourage you to share this with a friend. Think about somebody who's got an upcoming renovation, wants to do a home remodel, and really isn't prepared to do so. Share this episode. Share this series with those people. We really want to share knowledge here. After these seven episodes, we will be back with all fresh content. Without further ado, jump into it. This in and of itself, the planning phase will make your project run literally 100% smoother. So uh, with that, what would you say would be the first step, first step. that we want to tell people to, to, to really dive into? Because a, a lot of this is, is an order of operations. And, and don't get us wrong, you can do this in a few different ways. We're going to give it to you in the way that we have been accustomed to doing it, that we generally do it, whether it's for private clients or for TV shows, um, that we found best practice for us. Well, look, first step, sit down with your partner and have a real conversation. Because you see us on the shows, whether it was Kitchen Cousins, um, well, Cousins on Call was a, a surprise, but we did tell people what we were kind of doing. We had the conversation sharing what was going on. You need to share your ideas with your partner. Lay it out, and the two of you need to start your own idea book. I, I think it really, and, and, and the two of you have access to it. So you're both dumping pictures in. You can go into house, you can do on house, you can go on Pinterest, you can do on Pinterest, you can go into dwell and, and you can do it in dwell. Right. But let's really break this down. An idea book. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense yep. to you because you're in the industry. But for those that don't know, or for those that are, are curious, an idea book is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a book of your ideas. Now, can you do this in paper? Absolutely. If you have magazine subscriptions and you see photos you like, you can go the old school route and clip things out and paste them on pages and, or slide them into, uh, into clear sleeves and binders. My preference, John's preference, we like to do it digitally. Um, House is great, H-O-U-Z-Z.com. Um, if you are not inclined uh, to do it on house, uh, Pinterest is a, is a great option. Um, yep. You know, social network, but you can keep boards private, uh, which is nice if you're working with a designer uh, and also for your partner. You, you guys can keep it private. You're not going to get comments on it. Um, you can keep it just between the two of you, share it with who you like, and, and start to dump images that you find on those boards. And I would say... Don't be too hard on yourself at this phase. No. Anything you like. Anything. Anything. Matter of fact, even photos you don't like, so yep. long as you put the note in the photo, that's the important part. I hate this photo because of X, Y, and Z. Absolutely. I love this photo because of A, B, and C. So as long as you're taking those notes along with posting the photos, when you go back and review everything, you're going to be able to pare it all down later. Well, one thing I, I just want to say that currently and what what my wife and I do is since of course I follow a lot of designers it's a lot of our friends a mm -hmm. lot of builders that, that we know in the area around the country and my wife because this is my business she is now full blown into it and she follows a lot of those same people we actually it, whether it's in our Instagram feed or on Facebook we actually take a picture of the photo on our phone and we have so you do a screen grab you do a screen grab there you go and then we have our own album in our phones that we dump everything into so we have access to those photos right there on our phone it's in our album we there see it all the time and the two of and we go through it we mark notes because if you make an album and a picture you can hard it or you can put a note saying hey love that or if i do a picture and she's like no way in hell are you putting that in our house. <laughs> She's like, not happening. But it's really cool because it's the two of us. 
We're sharing it. We're following. And look. Well, it's that, a great way to encourage communication. It's a great way to, to break through some barriers, maybe a little uh, a little real world therapy instead it, of it, sitting it, in the doctor's <laughs> office. It is. <laughs> no, but it's cool. It's cool because the two of us, you know, it's something that we're talking about all the time because it's right there on our phones and we're updating it like. I literally probably updated every day. I put pictures because we're always thinking about the next project, yep. next house, and it's right there and it's tangible and you see it. Right. And and look, you know, that's great. You're in the business. Jen happens to have gotten passionate about design because of what you do. Um, but, you know, guys, don't think you need to be doing this all the time, you know, 365 days a year. If, if you're not, if you don't have a pro- project planning, excuse me, <laughs> let's try English. If you don't Get have a, if you don't have a project coming up, you know, you, you don't you don't have a need to be doing this stuff. That's fine. But when you know that you want to start a project, a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, whatever it is, you know, any of these methods are great. Um, personally, I I use a combination of Pinterest and House. I will generally um, I will generally le- lean to whatever uh, platform my client is more comfortable with. And if I'm doing a project for myself. I choose Pinterest because it gives me a lot more flexibility uh, with a few other apps that I use on my phone for creating mood boards and, 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 and different things. Um, but the, I think one of the other points that I really want to make about, about creating your digital notebook um, is that it's about overall look and feel. You, uh, the next step here is that we're going to get into in a second is choosing your design professionals. That is a combination of one or either of an architect and a designer, an architect or a designer. Um, And we'll get there. But the point is that you want to be sharing this notebook with those professionals. And they are going to be able to guide you and take you through the deeper analysis of, of the room and the aesthetic and the feel that you're trying to create. So believe it or not, we can decipher a lot from the images that you put there. There's a lot more in common in these images than you might think. So anything that speaks to you, I would encourage you to put into that notebook and don't edit it until you are with uh, one of your design professionals. So and so you, you kicked it off good. And I think talking about architect, designer, general contractor, right. how many people do you need? We get that question asked to us a lot. Do we need an architect? Do we need a designer? Do we need an engineer? I mean, that's that's an, another part to it that a lot of people don't realize sometimes is a totally separate thing. Sometimes your architect can do both for you. Yep. Those are questions that, that you need to find out. Yeah. So I, jumping into the design professionals, it, it's, it's a multifaceted, multi-layered kind of thing. Uh, let's see. The easiest way I can put this, if you are doing a room refresh, you're not ripping down sheetrock, you're not ripping up floors, uh, you're looking for maybe wallpaper or wall treatment. Not uh, moving n- any mechanicals, new, furni- right? new, new furniture, correct. Not moving yeah. any mechanicals. You are fine to do that by yourself or with a designer. Uh, either, one of, either one is fine. If you're confident in doing it, that's great. Um, and don't forget now, you know, there's traditional interior designers. And then on a more economical front, you can do stuff with online interior designers. Yeah. Um, particular service that I am familiar with but have not used. So this is not an endorsement. I'm, I'm, I don't know how they do. I know they are reviewed quite well. Uh, is Laurel and Wolf. Uh, laurelandwolf.com. So you can check them out um, if you're looking to, to really save money. Um, in general, I think a designer winds up saving you money in the long run, um, especially when they're passing on their design discounts. Um, so you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck there. Now, if you are moving walls, if you're d- moving mechanicals, if you're doing a large renovation that's going to require permits, you need an architect. There's no two ways about it. You don't get not to choose if it. you want one or yeah, not. Not getting around you that. You need an architect. You can choose to work with a designer. So I think that's that's the best way to think about it. And I, I would say this. You know, people say, "Well, how much time do I need with the architect?" Look, it all depends on the size project, as Anthony was just saying. But I think you need to give yourself a good month to month and a half of going back and forth with him or her. You really need to also think about this. If you're giving them your design book and you're showing the ideas beforehand, that allows them to design in the vein right off the bat. They're not coming to you with things saying, oh, hey, do you like this? It's like, no, there's no way I'm going to do that inside my house. Here's what I like. So that's how your ideas are going to play a role very, very fast. 
the architect looks at it. He says, you know what, we can definitely do this. Let's do a couple iterations of it. You sit down maybe two or three times and you come up, come up with your plans. My friend, good uh, story that just I just actually was getting my hair cut because I could get my hair cut every two weeks. My <laughs> barber Rob is do- going through a renovation right now. And he falls into kind of, I think, what a lot of people do. Uh, my buddy's an architect. He's going to do the plans for me on the side. He says it's, it's no big deal. He puts it in his hands. So that's exactly what he did. He, he, he went to his friend and took his friend <laughs> just to do this simple, it was a simple addition. He's doing a, a new garage. He's, he's blowing out the, the back of his house. Mm-hmm. Took him three months oh boy. to get those plans. Yeah, I don't want to say never work with friends, but definitely be cautious when it comes but to it. he gets the plans finally after three months of waiting for him. And, pe- and people, three months to do a small addition off the back in a garage, that's not n- – no way it takes that long. You're talking three months to get a full set of plans to, to doing a, a, a new home. So it took him that long. Then his buddy tells him, well, I'm not going down to, 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 yeah, to the building department. This is a disaster. Okay, so, I, I know, you know where this story is so going. Go jump just- off a cliff, buddy. <laughs> Oh my God, but, that's but, horrible. But now he's five months, and he's into at the it, beginning. And he's at the beginning. He's at, so back at the beginning. Again. So what's the lesson there? The lesson is take your time when you're picking a professional, whether it's a designer or an architect. Um, I generally recommend sitting down with three of any professional that you're going to work with: general contractor, designer, architect. If that's too many, two will suffice. But I, I, I would highly recommend getting at least two opinions. Um, you know, aside from organization and, 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 you know, the general sense you get uh, when you walk in the office and the organization and, and the like, it's a, it's a gut feeling. You got to trust your gut here. Do you want these people in your home? Um, do, you, do, you, do you trust these people, right? It's, it's a, you need to have a working relationship with them. You need to feel comfortable asking questions. Uh, this is not your line of work. So you don't want to be made to feel stupid or like you shouldn't ask a question or, or you're bothering somebody. You want somebody who's going to be attentive to your needs um, and explain the process to you as you're going along. Um, and that's generally what I look for when I'm going to go and work with somebody. And quite honestly, I look for that in clients. I don't want an asshole client. Yes. I want somebody sure. who's excited about their home, who's conversational. I want to feel like I'm working with my cousin, John. Like we have a conversational relationship. We've been friends forever. You know, there's no reason that people can't be nice and be good at what they do and get things done when they say. Um, so my general rule of, of thumb is don't work with assholes. <laughs> That's a nice... It's so, <laughs> so lesson of everyone, lesson of the day, do not work with assholes. That's a great, that's a great point. You know what? I might get a shirt made with that. Animal. Maybe we will. That's, I like that. Don't work <laughs> with assholes. Um, Going back to the different size pro- projects you guys can have, um, it is worth noting that if you're doing a project that does not require an architect and does not require permits, most designers, most designers that, that are worth their salt can give you a set of design documents, yep. uh, blueprints or, or uh, scaled architectural drawings that is going to represent the current dimensions of your room and is going to show you... Um, you know, what is and what is going to be. Um, that is uh, greatly, greatly helpful when you're trying to visualize a room and you're very nervous about picking a color or a texture or a pattern when, you know, you can get a 3D rendering ahead of time or, um, you know, or just have a, a general feel for your spatial awareness. You know, he comes in or she comes in, she measures your couch and knows that it's, you know, 10 by 10 by, by two feet deep and drops that into your room that's 15 by 20, well, that couch is way too big for the room, you know, you can, you'll know that before you go and buy that couch. I feel like I'm starting to ramble. But no, no, you're I'm trying no, to make a point. No, no. You, Am you, I making my point? You are making your point. Okay. You, are, <laughs> you are making your point. But uh, Usually but, when there's an audience around, you know if you're losing I know, you're like, else. oh, hey, that guy's falling asleep you, over you there. You and me just sitting here. This is a little strange. Um, you, you know, I, I think also... Talking about the architects is people ask us, do I need an engineer? We and we get that all the time because look, we know open concept design is big. You want to take down walls, especially in those renovations that that we are doing. What I would say to this, if you are looking for an engineer, you're not sure. That's why if you talk to your architects, some architects can do it in house, 
or they have someone they, they, they can recommend to you and you can go to that engineer and they will make the engineer drawings that you could bring down to, to the building department. So you want to lean on your other professionals when looking to bring your team together. The biggest thing, is, the biggest thing is having a cohesive team and you want the designer, you want the architect, you want the engineer and last but not most, but probably most important, your GC. Your GC has to, he's the one that's going to yeah, be the quarterback. Yep. He's going to be quarterbacking this entire job. And people ask us, do I need a GC? We know a GC normally will charge anywhere from 15 to 20% on top of what the hard costs are because that is their fee for running your job. I am telling you, it is well worth it because if you try to do it yourself, if you try to individually hire a plumber, you try to individually hire an electrician, an HVAC, a painter, any other trade. You're, you're talking even even going as far as any of your carpenters. You try to hire any of those individual people. You bringing, bringing them together and making a construction schedule that they will adhere to is very difficult. And you don't have the time. It comes on the time. Well, and I think it simplified, it's best said that whatever money you're saving on your general contractor, you're going to spend in lost time. Plain and simple, that doesn't even take into account mistakes. So you you definitely want a good team of professionals. Um, Once you've got your architect selected, uh, your designer selected, you're going to be creating a plan. Um, And like John mentioned a little bit earlier, it's an iterative process, right? So you're going to have iteration one, uh, which is basically what I do for clients is I do their as built and then I do my first vision of their room. So whether I see a wall taken down or not, I draw it as I would like to see it. Um, and I don't, I don't get into colors. I don't get into textures. I don't get into pattern. I do nothing. I put some placeholder furniture in, in there and we get a, an overall feel for the room. Um, and we, and then we talk about it from there and, and we move some walls and, and, uh, decide, decide if the space is, is big enough. And then I go back and then start to layer in the actual aesthetics within the room. And l- l- let me ask you a question because I think we get asked this a lot at home shows and it, it could vary because it depends on the project. Yep. But if you had to give, let's say a person is doing a renovation to, to their home, it's a moderate home, mm-hmm. call the home. 2,000 to 2,500 square feet, so pretty average. Mm -hmm. They're doing kitchen, living room, dining room. Maybe they're doing an open concept. They're really opening up the main entertainment space. Yep. What would you say is the time frame of your planning process before you're starting your demo of taking down stud one inside that home. So just to give people a, so from a, from digital from digital notebook to selecting your professionals Correct. to drawing your plans. Yes, uh, I mean I think at a minimum you're at three months, but you're probably more like four months. Four months. I would I would say a solid. Wouldn't you? I would say that's what I say. Three months. Was that, that was what three I was months. Say. Three months. And the caveat th- is you don't know about permits because that's all we don't know how. Each individual. Okay, I was putting permits in. Oh, you're putting permits. Fair, okay. fair enough. I would say three months. Three months. I would say three months. That's what I would yeah. Say. I mean, the digital notebook. You know, you're kind of cobbling together over time. Um, you're doing that while a, a bunch of other tasks are going on. Yep. You, you get your professional selected. They get started drawing. You know, month and a half in getting you know the iterations going. Um, once that's done, then you're, then you're getting into the f- real fun stuff of actually selecting product and, and, and getting down to your final choices. And then yes, getting into the, into the building department. Um, and in that, in that time frame, you're also interviewing general contractors, contractors. which, uh, is a nice segue into what's next. So we've covered, we've covered, uh, your digital notebook. Yep. We've covered choosing your design professional, getting that plan created and, and, Please understand as well that these all of these tasks slightly overlap the one before and the one after. There's never a, a hard and fast line where something starts and stops because if you have these things slightly overlapping, you're able to condense your time frame and move forward faster, coupled with the fact that you need input from the person after the task that comes before it to... to to allow you to complete that entire task. What I mean by that is when you're interviewing contractors, you want them to look at an edit of the plans that's not 100% complete to see what their professional opinion is. Drawing lines on paper and building things in the field are very different. 
uh, good contractors are always going to have suggestions on how to do things that might be a little more economical for you or you know they're going to tell you this is going to this we can do this but it's going to be super expensive because you need this crazy custom structural beam in order to span the gap from a to b and and just as as a point look we we've, we've dealt with many architects i love architects but at the same time sometimes they spec things and put things in the plans that are way too much money and you don't know that so that's why the point you just made is perfect you need to sit down with that GC and say, hey, talk with my architect. I really want to open up the back wall, and I'm thinking of putting this, this, this row of windows. He might say, do you realize the span and load right. that it's going to take to support the amount of windows you're putting in? Once you hear that price point, believe me, your plan could change very, very fast. And if you were to say, I, I mean, me? Nine times out of ten, how many people come to you? They don't even have a plan. They say, "Hey, I'm looking for a quote. I have a house, you know, right? right? I, the, the, the kitchen is 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 ten by ten, and they, and they start talking to you, and you say, "Okay, well, let me see your plans." They go, yeah. oh, "I don't have them." Right. How are you supposed to quote, or how do you hold anyone accountable if you don't give them plans? If you're going off of, if you're just talking to a GC and you're giving him just, you know basic measurements of your house and you're talking about a vision but it's nothing's in concrete he can give you an estimate when he starts if you don't have those plans in place that price is going to totally change yeah. so get the plans done before you start having the serious serious talks and then you can alter the plans absolutely um i think you know the process of interviewing contractors is is very is very similar to architects and designers it's about being able able to be conversational about having a good line of communication this is the person who's going to be in your house more than you are during yep. the construction process. So you want to trust that person and you want to feel like you can check in with them and, and not feel like, like a burden. Um, I generally have my clients start uh, interviewing contractors once we have the second or third plan iteration done, depending on, on, on how crazy we're going with, with plans, how much detail is going to be on them. Um, I want to, and when, and when we interview these contractors, what I tell my clients is get three contractors from around town. I work in a lot of different, uh, towns in New Jersey. I don't know all these contractors, but the, the important thing is that they work in the local municipality, much like an architect, you get used to the building department you're working within. All of them want slightly different things on their plan sets. Yep. All the inspectors want slightly different things on site. So working with someone who's used to working in the municipality that you work in, that you live in, excuse me, um, is, is really important to their relationship with the building department and thereby the timeline with which you can get things done at your project. So the building department is a great place to start. Take a trip over there. See what guys are in and out of that office all day or see who's pulling a lot of permits. In general, I don't believe building departments are allowed to recommend contractors. Correct, yeah. They, they, they can't recommend but it. But you can say, hey, what contracting firm pulled a lot of permits this month? Yep. That's not a recommendation. It's public, it's public information. It's public information. Exactly right. So that's one great way. Another great way of locating good contractors, talk to a real estate agent in the office. Figure out who does a lot of sales, who's got a good firm going on. They usually know at least a handful of contractors that can do work for people because they're selling homes to clients who generally want to change something pretty quickly. So those are two really good resources for, for finding those contractors. The first interaction I like to have with a contractor is at the client's house, right? I invite them yep. over and we sit there with the plans and we walk we walk the whole thing. I try and do it in one day because I like to be there with my client and, and help them through the process. So if there's two or three contract, if there's three contractors, it's three and a half, four hour process. Yeah. Understand that it's going to be half your day, guys. It's a, it's a lot of work. Um, but, but again, this planning process is going to make your life so easy. Once they start swinging hammers, you will thank us for it. I promise you. Well, and, and look, we're, we're getting a lot in the detail, but I, I just want to make the point, and we've said this so many times in the past when we're traveling, this is the biggest investment that you own. Yep. Why would you not do this? Why would you not take the time to go through it? Be John, very are, you, detailed? are you yelling at everyone that's listening? Listen to me every now <laughs> <laughs> No, but it, sometimes it, 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 
it, it doesn't make sense to me because, or maybe because we're in the business and we see, you know, we care so much. Listen, you, you've seen a lot more problems than other people have. It's true. And it's true. What what generally happens is the problems arise and then they're aware of it. The reason, the whole reason, the inception for this podcast is to save homeowners heartache. Yes. Time. And money. Learn, look, <laughs> I think learn from our mistakes because I'm telling you, Anthony and I have a lot of mistakes. The only, the only That's how way you learn best is the only way you learn in this business. And and we've been there where we haven't. Look, we're telling you this because we've been in your shoes. We've st- when we started our d- development company and doing our own personal projects, we're, we were like everybody else. You want to go, 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 oh, go, go. You ain't kidding. <laughs> and sometimes. Sometimes my uncle Greg, he tries to push it a little fast. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, why don't we say he'll be a guest on a future episode? Bring, yeah, we got to bring him in and have him as a guest. He'll because- be a guest on a future episode, and uh, you guys will you guys will understand that a little bit more. But like everything, we know the anticipation, the anxiety. You want to get it started. But if you're doing this right now and you're taking the time with the interview process, yes. the heartaches don't happen that's why it's it, it's so important yes and it, one thing i want to know uh, with picking the gc and doing the interviews go ahead uh, look i i love going to a project they are working on i i think that absolutely is, I, great I think point it's great the point. best way to see their work we can all see pictures we know everybody has websites we know everybody is either on house or on angie's lists or home advisor look there, there's so many of them right but a picture doesn't tell you everything. Anybody can take a beautiful picture, but you don't really see the detail. Well, what, you know what I want you to share, though, because I th- you, you, you've said it before at, at various shows, and, and you say it well about a, a neat construction site, which yeah. is kind of counterintuitive, but just kind of elaborate on that a little it bit. It is, and look, it, I think a lot of people associate contractors with being messy or dirty or, or it's not clean. Or, or a job site, in short, is chaos. It's chaos. Right? It doesn't I, need to be. It, not at all. And in all honesty, the, ch- the the jobs we've been on, when they are neat, they are organized, The all the subcontractors are taking care of what they're supposed to and they're not being slobs, those are the ones you want inside your home. They're going to c- take care of your home. They're going to really respect your home. And they're proud of their work. And they're proud of their work. That's the biggest thing. So if you walk into a job and you just see debris all over the place, you see tools all over the place, you better run for the hills, people, (laughs) because I am telling you right now, your house is going to look like that. Now, if you walk inside and you say, oh, wow, look at the job box over. That's the job box of the uh, electrician. Nice and neat. There's the plumber's job box. Nice and neat. There's HVAC. Nice and neat. The house is swept up. Now, of course, look, if you're coming in the middle of a day, they might be doing some big work and it's a little messy. But you want to see how they finish up at the end of the day because if they're putting everything back and it looks neat and it looks organized, that's when you know that somebody that cares and will get your job done fast. That's what it's about. Great, great point. Um, I think the last point on contractors, you're, you've got to rev- – <clears throat> excuse me. The last point on contractors is – You've got to receive their bid and then review it and and decide what you're actually going to do. Yep. In general, this is not the case all the time, but in general, if you get three quotes, usually one of them is way off, either way high or way low. I tend to throw that one out immediately. The two that are close together says to me, okay, these are two separate guys. They're independent. They did their own quotes, and they've got similar numbers. This is probably the ballpark I should be in. How do you go about this and do it the best way or the most or the most accurate way, I should say? Not the best way, but the most accurate way. What I tend to do is I bring up a spreadsheet on my computer. All these guys kind of have their own methodology to creating a quote so it makes sense to them. Not necessarily to you, but it makes sense to them so they know that they're priced correctly. So what I like to do is I go through each and every line item on the three bids, even the one that's the outlier I use. I create a column for each contractor, and then I create my line items. Those line items are going to be a slightly different between each bid, but so long as you break it out appropriately. So let's say the framing number is $20,000 for one contractor and $25,000 for another contractor. Does contractor B have the lumber included in that? Yep. 
does contractor B have the dumpsters included in that or some other line item that that contractor A doesn't have? If so, then you take it upon yourself, add another line into your spreadsheet and drop that $5,000 below the 20. Now, guess what? They're the exact same price on that line item and so on and so on. This, this process will take you an hour to probably two hours to, if it's your first time doing it. Well, don't be afraid to ask questions, right? If, if someone has 25 and someone has 20, absolutely, don't be afraid to ask the contractor, hey, why is your price $5,000 more than a price and, I saw? And I think this also, you know, uh, this also speaks well to having a good architect and a good designer who, yep. can, who can be an owner's rep and, and who you can ask con- uh, these, these questions to. Sure. Um, but equalizing the quotes between the three different people so you are actually comparing apples to apples is a huge benefit. Then you can ask guys to come down off of certain numbers or you can say that you don't need certain things and you can make your final decision. Last but not least is is having that good working relationship and communication. And, and I think even in past projects that we've done, we've never – it's every single time we get quotes, we don't say, "Oh, well, this guy is the the lowest number, so I'm going with him." Sometimes we've picked the the person that has the highest number yep. because we know the quality of work. So don't get scared because you see a number that, of course, is too high. Like Anthony said, there's always going to be one outlier. That one, of course, you, you throw out. You might end up picking the guy that's the most expensive, but he might also be the best. So it's. I know we're I know we're all humans and it's in our nature. Go with the cheapest. That's it. But it's guess, not worth like it. it's not worth it. You know why? Because that person might change order you to death and might throw in. Well, hey, you know he he bid your job for fifty. At the end of it, it's costing you seventy five thousand because he didn't put so much into it. And so, guys, change orders is is going to be an episode. That's a whole all, all, separate <laughs> all, all on its own. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's complicated and it's it's kind of the ugliest part of of construction. So we we will get to that. Um. So 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 stick with us. Um. So. We've created our notebook. We've chosen our design professional. We've created a couple of iterations of our plans, and we've interviewed our contractors. So by this point, you should be getting to a really final design with your, with your design professionals, and you should be looking to start placing your orders, especially if you're looking at a kitchen renovation where a semi-custom line of cabinets can be anywhere from four to six weeks lead time. Yep. You want to make sure you're placing orders in anticipation of the work starting uh, so that your contractors don't get stalled and then they're you know not showing up every day and and you're wondering where they are again a, a future episode uh, as we as we get into more of the the nuances on the job site but suffice it to say you want to be placing the orders for the majority of all your finish items while you're still in the planning phase. If you have everything on site, there's nothing these guys can't do. So long as they can keep moving, they will be at your job. If they're at your job, the job gets finished. And everyone asks us, when we watch your shows, how do you do it so fast? How, how, how does it well, happen? TV has no bearing on planning a real construction project. But the, the, the biggest thing that TV, I think, has taught us is how important the planning process is. Because we're so detailed in that planning process, we order all of our finished materials before we show up there and we have those materials ready to go. Like Anthony just said, if you have those materials ordered and they're there for the contractor, that's how we get them done that fast. Now, yes, of course, we have a, we have guys working 24-7. We have many, many contractors that necessarily wouldn't be there working on top of each other to get them done in a couple days. That's TV. Yes, but the overall premise is correct. You're yes. absolutely The right. overall thing is the planning process, even for TV, is still the same as your private proje- project and also as the ordering. We, we go through, we sit down with, with our, our production company a month and, month and a half to two months out. We're ordering all the materials, picking our tile, colors, paint, lighting, whatever it m- might be. So when we show up there, we open up the box truck, box truck, boom, there it is. Everything's there. Nobody's running out saying, oh my God, I don't have this. I don't have the tile. I don't have the light. I don't. It's all there, ready to go. And you had me, you had me at boom. I had you at boom. You had me at boom. <laughs> Once John says boom, it's done. That's it. It all just it's happens. A, it's like magic. It's over. <laughs> uh, um, but even, but look, 
we've been there. We 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 picked some really custom tile. Custom tile could take four to six weeks. Oh yeah. It's not it's not just your cabinets. It's like you said. It could be a lighting. It could be your cabinets. It could be your tile. It There's be, a whole host it could be of things. Flooring. Even if you go with a real wood flooring, you want something specific that maybe they don't have in stock. Again, you could be in that four to six week. Absolutely. Um, okay, so as you're placing orders, uh, you you are also finalizing on your contractor. And once you have them selected, first of all, you got to make sure that they're pulling your permits. Technically speaking, you should not be pulling permits from the building department. The contractor of record should be doing all that. They need to fill out the paperwork. Guys, insurance. Not you, them. They need to have general liability insurance, and as uh, an additional insured on the policy, your name, your home address, or a location of your project, wherever it might be, that needs to be on that insurance policy. Minimum $1 million coverage, period. Yep. No contractor steps onto any job that I am repping a client for without an insurance policy. Yeah, and, and guys, you, you might say a million dollars. Oh my God. That's it, a smallest guys, policy you can get. It, it, it's nothing. You're talking not in, in the insurance world, especially in construction, nominal, nominal dollars. If you see a guy that has 500000 or 250000 literally, we're talking for a couple dollars, dollars, three, four dollars, he could get a million dollars worth of coverage. He's opting out of that because he doesn't want to pay. That is an indicator, like Anthony said. Sorry, buddy. Not going to happen. Because in our world today, you don't know who can get hurt. You, can, you don't know who can come on your job site. They fall. Another, another subcontractor falls. They will sue everybody that is on that job site. And you just want to make sure that you are protected as the homeowner. Okay. So last piece of the puzzle is your contract with your contractor. Now... They should be supplying a contract to you uh, because they are, they are the, the, the professional that you're hiring. What I do is I supplement that contract with a written scope of work. I'm going to try and keep this simple because I can really go down a rabbit hole with it. <laughs> this, is, um, this is the part where it could get so complicated. The, the, most architectural drawings do not have every last detail. Why? Because you don't have your paint colors selected by the time the plans are done. You don't have the wallpaper or the floor finish or the backsplash tile selected. And you don't want to wait and hold up the architect where he can be submitting these drawings to the building department. Yep. Coupled with the fact that it's going to cost you extra money for him to re-update the plans again and add all these additional notes. I was going to say, they, they can do it, but like you said, it's, 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 just, it's time. So I find it way easier to create an additional scope of work. And at the top of that scope of work, it says any time that the, that, the, that the architectural plans conflict with this scope of work, you are to advise me and I will tell you which one takes precedent. The scope of work that I write up takes me about a weekend because I go to it, I write it up the first time, I put it away for a few hours, I go back, I review it. I go away for a few hours, or I put it away for the night, I review it on Sunday morning with a cup of coffee, maybe one more time at the end of the weekend. But if you do that, the chances of a change order are way, way less. Why? You're telling them exactly where you want the paint. You're telling them that they're responsible for the garbage containers. You're telling them that... that uh, you know that that they are responsible for buying the rough material and you expect that all of the wood studs the electric wire the hi hats all that stuff is already in their quote you don't want to hear about a change of price so again we'll delve deeper in into that uh in the in the change order episode but a written scope of work that is signed along with the general contractor's contract is is going to benefit you immensely and I just one point I would say to put in the scope of work, which which I like also, is talking about site visits and when you're going to do walkthroughs as well. It's something nice to point out because a lot of people, they don't think about it or they, they don't realize that maybe some architects or general contractors, some people might charge extra for it. Maybe if you put something in there saying, well, look, there's a minimum of three visits that, that we're going to do. There's one going to be after demo, one going to be during rough, and one going to be during finish that are definite walkthroughs with you there. So you're taking notes, you're going through the project. That's great, John. You know, and, and 
look, the way I like to do it is I like all the professionals are doing the walkthrough at the same time. So everybody's bringing up a point maybe that someone missed or or they forgot about um, because it happens. You, you, no one's perfect. This isn't a perfect process. So if you have your, your designer, you have your architect, you have your GC there doing these, let's, let's call them milestone, milestone yep. walkthroughs, then you are tackling the issues and problems before they get out of control. Yeah, and, I, and, and it's a great point. And I think on the other side of that point, you know, as a homeowner who might not be very familiar with this process, you can become burdensome to these guys. And if they're trying to make you happy and they, and they want to be there for you, you know, there's a, a line where they might not know how to say, listen, this is way too many walkthroughs. Yep. You know, we're not on the same page here, uh, which again, everything goes back to communication. Um, but, it, you know, fair enough. Listen, this is your first time through a project. You, you guys may not know. So to John's point, you know, putting it in writing is, is going to help you um, a lot. And, and I think in doubt, put it in writing. And prior to putting it in writing, if in doubt, ask a question first and say, hey, what, you know, what's reasonable? How many walkthroughs do you generally yep. do? And then get a second opinion from the architect or the designer. Yeah, and just guys, no, look, all these professionals, you're not the only job. They have a lot going on. Very true. So if you point it out at the beginning of the process, it stops all these issues and problems that could come up and could really slow down the project. Because we've all been there. We want to get people in a room together. Sometimes it gets tough. Life gets in the way. And this is just an easy way to, to, to avoid that. I think kind of in closing here, guys, um, there's something to, to note, and that is everything we've really discussed here, aside from the digital notebook, which is 100% your responsibility. If you have a designer who also does construction management, which both John and I do because we were contractors, and now we, we are concentrated just on the design and the construction management end, basically this entire process after the digital notebook can be replaced by your designer and CM, construction manager. Yep. The construction manager will operate as your owner's representative, meaning representing you and only you as the homeowner. So I'll yell at the general contractor, I'll make sure the architect gets plans, and I'll communicate directly with you. So instead of you having to communicate with an architect, a general contractor, being unsure of a lot of different questions, also interacting with the designer. The only per person you've got to interact with then is the designer slash CM. So it, it's, um, it's something definitely that if you are on the busier side or seriously want to take a hands-off approach, look for someone who can be your construction manager. And if you can get that person to also be your designer, get a little bang for your buck there, um, you know, it's, it's going to save you some dollars. Any anytime you think you're saving money by not hiring someone, I would suggest that you're going to lose that in time and mistakes in trying to educate yourself. So spend your money on your on your professionals, and I think you'll you'll get through your projects uh, with a lot less headaches. Well, guys, look, that was that was a fun topic. Gotta love planning. Absolutely, I, I, I love it. It's organization. It's one of it's one of the things that just puts a smile on my face. Yeah, I say, man. I say, all right, we're organized. I feel I, I feel good, but no, guys, this it, this was fun. This is just gonna kickstart your project. We have so many more topics that are gonna come up because you have to know all the different aspects that go along with the job that we've been talking about here. We'll dive into them in future episodes, but it's been fun on this one. Absolutely. Speaking of which, next episode budgeting. Where is your money going to go and how much of it is going to go there? We will cover it next time on Home with the Cousins. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. Hey, guys, real quick before you go, we just want to say thanks for listening to the show this week. And if you have a second, please subscribe on the Apple Podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. And share the show with your friends so we can keep growing this great community. Remember to check out homewiththecousins.com to read our show notes from this episode, see past episodes, download our free renovation document package, or just to send us a note. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Carino Anthony and at Culinary John. Our show is produced and edited by yours truly, with original music intro and outro created by Steve and Joseph Padula. I'm Anthony Carino, and thanks for listening. Thank you.